Hey, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carves. So we are carving an epic skull today with a one eyeball. Now I'm going to use a lot of cuts all burrs and everything and we're carving it out of this. We're carving it out of Burly Elm. Look at all those cracks. Uh, they could work in my favour and they could just, well, ruin the sculpture completely. Who knows? Okay, so I've cut this out on the bandsaw and I've got a general shape of the skull. So you can see my skateboard skull over there on the left. I'm also using a tiny skull as a reference. Okay, so you see that cross there. That is the high point of the nose. You do not want to carve that. So that point up there, that's going to be the lowest part of the nose. So generally what I do is I sort of like lower everything down gradually looking at the profile see if that nose is forming right I might even take those eyes back a little bit as well it's just sort of like a real slow process you see it sort of developing there it's looking pretty good and it's all about refinement when it comes to carving it's sort of yeah just keep on sort of like taking things back looking at it and it's no sort of like real fast process when if you did heaps of these skulls you'd probably go back really far really quick but when you're first starting out just take things slowly sort of get those little details in as well sort of like I'm putting in some eyebrows there obviously this isn't like a realistic skull it's kind of a, like a Halloween kind of evil looking skull and I'm just sort of like refining that nose now with that beautiful taper burr from Kutzel. It's a fine, really good for details. Really good for getting in those really narrow parts. Really liking the look of that sort of brow at the top. Now I'm going to go and put in the jaw. Well, not the jaw. I'm leaving the jaw out on this, but the top set of teeth there. You can see there on the tiny little skull what I've done. So we've got a long way to go in there. So I've got to get rid of that. And so today I thought I'd try and use this finger sander. Uh, I use it quite a bit, a bit. I use it quite a bit in bigger sculptures. That's what I'm trying to say. So I quite like it because it sort of takes off things in a real balanced way. So I sort of like get that round by just sort of moving it over there so it's sort of like connecting on kind of a quite a large flat area and you can use the tip of it too to get into those curves of course you're never going to really get into the narrow part so you're going to have to return to using the cuts all burrs but I have found it useful it's really useful actually so here we go we're back in the cuts all burrs and one of my favorites is a sphere burr really nice for making skulls sort of like the eyes and all around the skull sort of like that bit, bit there i find the flame burr although it is really good uh, you kind of don't want to have a point at the end you want to have that sort of rounded part Okay, so you want your skull to be dynamic and what we have here, we've got a problem is we've got a real flat area at the bottom and that's too much of a U. It needs to sort of like flow back and I'm not saying this is realistic of a skull but I just feel like it needs to have a little bit of sort of movement there from the jawline. You can sort of see it forming there. It looks a little bit nicer than just a like a U going down. Trying out this burr here. I'm not going to recommend it at the moment, but it's supposed to last twice as long as all other Dremel burrs. And this burr here is quite interesting. I got these from America through a third party in New Zealand. I don't, I'm not affiliated with them, but I really, really like them. So we're going into the teeth now. And I want to make these teeth really gnarly, so I'm putting some big gaps in between them. And I'm going to go in and then really sort of like scuff it up. I'm not going in for Hollywood teeth here, you know. These are nasty teeth. He ain't been to the dentist for a long time, you know what I'm saying? I heard a friend of mine say, Matt, you gotta sort of like not say hit the like button and subscribe 
So if you agree with that, friend, hit that like button. You gotta say, those are some nasty looking teeth. So now we're gonna clean up the sculpture and I usually go in with a cutter burr and this is a nice little round one to get into those little grooves there. Just use it really, really lightly and you can see it sort of like makes those little lines disappear. And I'll go over with a little bit of sandpaper as well. I don't take too long on these really kind of rough, gnarly looking sculptures. You wanna leave a little bit of the scratches in. So on the cranium, I think it's probably good to sort of uh, take your time and sort of like sanding this because those bigger areas are really going to show up the grain of the wood. So once you, that oil hits, it's going to look stunning. It's a beautiful piece of wood and I think the actual cracks actually worked in my favour in the end. Uh, it looks really cool. I don't think you can actually make cracks in wood that look as effective as cracks that were already there. Hey, look at that. That is amazing.